Let's see. The buns out. Garlic and pepper got to have that. I was 33 when I started smoking, and I was smoking a cigar every now and then just for the fun of it, and enjoyed that. Didn't inhale. Uh, I was driving taxi at the time, and a cigar is not the kind of thing people want in their taxi. So I got tired of throwing out expensive cigars and just really wanted something to do with myself when I wasn't driving and was waiting on a fare, so I started smoking cigarettes. My main triggers were, I think, probably eating, driving, and breathing. And uh, that last one's kind of difficult to work around. <laughs> My first attempts to stop smoking, I might make it a day or two, or maybe even a week. The longest I ever made it was two weeks. There's all these sorts of things that you do, like drinking coffee, going out on the porch in the morning with your coffee, and all those things, it seems like you can't do without your little friend with you. 20 years ago, I could do all these things without a cigarette. When you're getting ready to quit, it's like, I won't be able to drink coffee ever again. I'll never be able to sit on the porch with my neighbor and drink a beer because I have to have a cigarette. How am I gonna do this? I was walking out of my doctor's office back in February of this year, and I saw a little pamphlet about a smoking cessation class at Norton's. And I said, hey, that sounds like something pretty cool. You would have maybe some help and some other people around. Maybe a little bit of a group doing this. It might be, this might work this time. So I picked it up and I called. And the nurse at Norton said, so you want the smoking class? And I said, uh, no, I got that covered. I'd like the smoking quitting class. <laughs> so she laughed and we got signed up. And the cool thing about it is, we didn't quit for two weeks, so we had two class times that we just talked and learned about nicotine addiction. Different tools that we can use to stop. Um, there were many that I'd tried, but one I'd never heard of was a nicotine inhaler. And the cool thing about that is, instead of just giving you nicotine all day long like the patch does, the nicotine inhaler, when you're getting ready to hurt somebody or go buy a pack of cigarettes, you can just puff on that a little bit and it saves people's lives and you don't buy cigarettes and it gives you something to do with your hand. And that really helped me. I play in a band called Judge Angus. We've been playing about eight or nine years. It's my way of kind of just mellowing out. It keeps me going. The first gig that I had with the band after I had quit smoking was probably a week into it, which is not far enough to be out of the weeds, and so you really have to be protecting yourself. So the first thing I did when the band went on break, and the fans say, come outside, let's smoke, I just said, I quit last week. I just put it out there. And they're like, oh, okay. Now I had all these people that knew I quit that I can't go out and smoke with them because I don't smoke. And they're gonna be like, dude, you can't smoke. So you just have to protect your, your, your you gotta know, and you gotta help yourself because sometimes you're helpless. <laughs> what you do is you put all the meat you can on the grill so you don't smell. <laughs> it feels awesome to have the monkey off my back. I'm not having to see how many cigarettes I got when I'm coming home to make sure I make it through the night. I'm just so happy not to be having to do the thing. You don't realize how many little 10 minute sections of your day are just, you're living for that next hour. And it's just always interrupted. That, I think that's the most spectacular. Your day can just flow. This program is part of Smoking and Health, an ongoing KET initiative funded in part by a grant from the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky.